Have you ever had an update for Final Cut Pro cause complete chaos? This video is not only going to show you how to create a backup of Final Cut Pro, but also how to backdate future libraries that you might have created. Firstly, I need to give a huge disclaimer. There is a very real chance that this can break your projects. So make sure you back up everything and only follow at your own risk. Before you ever update Final Cut Pro, go into your finder, go to applications and look up Final Cut Pro. Right click on Final Cut Pro, then select compress. This is going to create a compressed version of Final Cut Pro that you can later unzip should you need to get that backed up version. Once it is done compressing, keep this file in a safe place that you can access later on. Should you need to jump back to an earlier version of Final Cut Pro, go ahead and uncompress that folder. Once you uncompress that folder, it's going to come in as Final Cut Pro 2. Go ahead and change the name of it to whatever version of Final Cut Pro you just uncompressed, then you can leave it inside of your applications folder. Now that we have this original version of Final Cut Pro, go ahead and locate the library that you want to backdate. Before you open this library, I strongly recommend that you right click on it, then select compress. This is going to create a duplicate version that you can later jump back to should anything break. Now that we have that compressed, go ahead, right click on it, then select open with and select the most current version of Final Cut Pro. In the newest version of Final Cut Pro, locate the event that contains all of your media and all of your timelines. If you have multiple events, make sure you push shift and select all of the other events in your library. From there, go up to file, then select export XML. In here, you can rename the XML whatever you like. I'll just call it backdated project. Then I will locate the folder where I want to put this XML. I strongly recommend that you create a whole new folder just to keep everything completely separate. I also personally recommend that you set your XML version to be something like 1.10. This will make it so older versions of Final Cut Pro should be able to open this XML without any problems. Personally, I have only tested this with the metadata view as extended. I have no idea if setting it to any of these other options will change anything, so I recommend you leave it at extended. After that, go ahead and push save. Once it has exported the XML, push command Q to completely close out Final Cut Pro. Once Final Cut Pro is completely closed, locate the folder that contains the backdated XML. Right click on that XML, then select open with and locate the version of Final Cut Pro that you want to open it with. So in this example, I'm going to open it with 10.6.4. Once you've done this, it will bring up a dialog window asking which library you want to open this in. Make sure you do not select any of the new libraries, but you actually create an entirely new library. Go to the bottom left and then select new. In here, you can name this library whatever you like then push save. Now in this example, I applied effects that were only available in the newest version of Final Cut Pro, but not available in 10.6.4. If you have effects that are not available in the old version of Final Cut Pro, it will bring up a dialog window letting you know that these effects are missing. Go ahead and just push OK. If we go ahead and expand it, we should see that we have all of the events that we created as well as our timelines. Also, I originally had applied the scene removal mask onto this particular shot, and now you can see that that effect was not transferred over to the older version of Final Cut Pro. So that is how to backdate a project. Again, I strongly recommend that you back up everything before following any of these steps. Even while I was making this tutorial, I had an instance where my files were completely corrupted, so it's extremely important that you back up everything. If this video was helpful to you in any way, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and maybe share it with somebody who could really use this information. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.